Hello, my name is Empty Without Brain. In this video, I am going to be describing the value of debating. Having a debate about a topic can make the learning fun. Unlike academic games where the winners are the ones who memorize the most facts, a debating competition or any debate introduces a whole new world of ideas to understand why something is true. Every answer we find needs to have a why at the end of it, so we can explore, investigate and discover more to enhance our understanding. This is due to our reptile and survival instinct to want more. The competitive debate promotes six key elements of critical thinking to enhance an individual to become a critical thinker so they can use evidence skillfully and impartially to organize their thoughts and articulate them coherently and consciously to determine the differences between logically valid and invalid references to learn individually and have the desire to do so assess verbal arguments and irrelevance and phrase it in essential terms and to question their own views and attempts to understand assumptions that are critical to those views and the implications of the views. Robert Reich, the former Secretary of Labour and now Professor of Social and Economic Policy at Brandeis University, has depicted the competitive debate as the Great Leveller. In the British parliamentary debating format, there are four positions on each of the two teams. In this kind of debate, the motion describes the problem and proposed answer. For example, should we criminalize adultery? The proposition team will support the motion, whereas the opposition will be against it. The four speakers on the proposition team are referred to as the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, the Member of Government, and the Government Whip. The second team is referred to as the Opposition. The names of each of the speakers in this team are the Leader of Opposition, the Deputy of Opposition, the Member of Government and the Opposition Whip. To outline the roles of each of the speakers, I will illustrate the order in which the information needs to be structured in order to create an effective argument. The role of the first proposition is to define the motion propose the mechanism to solve the problem, explain what the problem with the current mechanism pro and provide some reasons why the proposal model would be more effective than the current model through three substantive points as well as describing a summary of all the points. The role of the first opposition is to present a rebuttal to the proposition's main points regarding their mechanism and outline three of their substantive points defending the current model and briefly sum up the points made. The roles of the second opposition and proposition are to present a rebuttal to the key points made by the second proposition and first opposition and to expand upon the substantives made by their partner for example give more examples of the utility of the mechanism they stand for to solve the issue. The roles of the third proposition and opposition are to reboot the key points made by the second proposition and opposition. They also need to expand the, the debate with fresh new ideas and with valid analogies. In order to create a good extension, their role is to present one detailed substantive, but with a variety of subpoints. The roles of the final speakers on each of the teams are to reboot the key points made by the previous speakers and to identify three main points of clash in the debate which have been raised by both proposition and opposition and try to create a summary uh, where they outline how their mechanism has won the debate or state why the, uh, the other team's uh, mechanism isn't working by comparison in order to solve the problem. So, in a nutshell, after all the speakers have finished, the judges will discuss with each other to determine which of the teams present the best and most persuasive arguments. This is one of the stages proposed policies and laws have to go through in order to become established. So when I hear dipshits who suggest that the United Kingdom is going to become a Muslim dominant country with Sharia law in place, just makes me want to hit my head on a table in disbelief at how naive and ignorant they are by making such a statement. 
To put it quite bluntly, no religion will ever become dominant in the United Kingdom concerning how the country is governed. The political laws which are in place within the, the multicultural society of the United Kingdom are universal and address everyone's human rights, no matter what religion you belong to. So to suggest that any religious set of standards will become dominant in the future is a claim made with no foundation of substantive evidence to support it, which is exactly why it would fail in a debate. However, I would like to propose a British parliamentary format of debate where the motion is, does a god exist? As an atheist, I will be in the opposition team against the motion, along with three other members of Trolling with Logic. I will invite any four creationists or deists to take part in the role of the proposition, and the judges will be the viewers. In this debate, I hope this will demonstrate how absurd the idea that any religious belief will have a significant influence on how the United Kingdom will be governed, because to begin with, they would have to go through this stage in order to prove whether any god exists, never mind whether it's their specific god. So I invite you to take part in our challenge and message me so we can make arrangements.